Tom Robbins. Uh, I'm a reporter. I uh, work for a lot of papers in New York. I'm now teaching journalism at the City University of New York Graduate School of Journalism, and I don't usually get asked big picture questions that are about issues either south of Staten Island or west of Hoboken, but I'm glad to be asked about war because it's something that colored my entire youth, uh, and less so as an adult, but I'm a 63 years old, I was of uh, draft age in, uh, during the Vietnam War, and this was an issue that weighed very heavily on me. And I was raised a Quaker, and as a Quaker, Quakers were taught that a war was immoral and wrong and unjust. And I struggled with this question, perhaps, I don't know, everybody my age really wrestled with the idea of nobody wanted to go to war, nobody wanted to be in Vietnam, but one of the issues that sort of overrode a lot of my thinking was whether or not you could ever take a human life, even if it was in a just cause. Uh, as things turned out, I didn't get, or I got drafted and they didn't want me, so I didn't have to go to Vietnam. But I remember a certain point in my thinking where I decided, you know what, what people are doing in some circumstances to resist wrongdoing against them is probably just. And I came to believe that maybe there was some justifiable wars, wars of national liberation, people who were rebelling against colonial powers or such things. And I guess maybe it's, you know, getting older, but I sort of now turned back to where I was as a younger person, realizing that I, I can't think of a single situation in which war has really helped. World War II was the example that everybody cites because it turned back some terrible powers around, around the world, but I, I'm not sure that we see the replication of that today. You know, I think that the shadow of nuclear annihilation, which is the other thing that sort of loomed over everybody in, uh, when I was growing up, when we finally sort of reached a point sometime in the mid-90s where that was no longer something you had to think about, I think that was a real sea change in people's thinking. And we thought that maybe we really gonna, were going to live in a world, possibly without, certainly without nuclear war. And obviously that turned around in you know modern era, post 9-11, we now live under a very different shadow of one of like whether or not there'll be some limited person with a nuclear device that could wreak havoc on a metropolitan area like New York. But I, I think that every time you look around at any circumstances, any of the flashpoints that we deal with today, whether it's the Mideast or, or Africa or Pakistan, Afghanistan, I. I can't think of a single one in which we can honestly say that as a result of having taken military action that the world was improved for it or that we have increased our betterment as society. So, you know, we used to say that, well, well, the United Nations can be the power that can come in and sort of solve these questions. And I think we've sort of been around long enough to see that the UN's ability to be able to solve these things is pretty limited. But I think that the the goal is basically to see this as a tactical question, maybe not so much as a moral one. I think that we can have a world without war, but I think it's got to be a world in which people decide that simply as a tactical solution to problems, um, it's sim simply self-defeating and that war feeds war, that every time we, uh, whether it's uh, you know a just cause or an unjust cause, it creates an enormous backlash on the part of the people who are being attacked. And, and you suffer the consequences, and I think we see that everywhere. And, and I, it, I think it's a simple point of human relations. If you're on the subway and somebody steps on your foot and they don't apologize for it, you're tempted to hold off and belt them. But you also know that once you do that, you're going to cause an incredible commotion on the subway car, and no one's going to really know that your foot got stepped on. You're going to be the guy who's belting them. These things don't solve problems. So, I don't know, I guess it starts locally, and maybe we can export it nationally and internationally.